Good morning, everybody. Everyone. Welcome to the Saturday Morning Real Estate Marketing Show with Ruthie Rocks, Ruth Albrand, and I am Marketing Max. Today, we are going to talk about how to help you know first-time home buyers and borrowers prepare really to get their finances in order to make sure they qualify for the mortgages and loans, especially coming into uh, next year here. A lot of lenders are cr uh, cracking down on uh, looking at income because of what happened through the pandemic this year. So we're going to talk about a variety of things today regarding mortgages, mortgages and how to help borrowers qualify for their mortgage in their home purchase. But before we dive into that, Ruth, what is happening in Las Vegas? Well, you know, Las Vegas is one of the most affordable places where people can live. And I think that uh, when you live here, you don't realize that so much. Mm -hmm. And I was hearing Tom Blanchard this week on a, a Zoom say that, you know, he went to Thailand and he got a massage for six dollars because <laughs> of the, you know. So I think and they, you know, when you live in Thailand, you think it's normal. So <laughs> I thought that was right. a good low common denominator analogy. But when you live in Vegas, you don't realize, you know, uh, our median price home is three hundred thirty seven thousand dollars. And so, I mean, your mortgage is going to be under under fifteen hundred dollars. And in most cases, you know, that's slower than the rent. So we have such affordable housing. And I I know that no matter who gets elected. Right. The feds right. have said they're going to keep these interest rates flat through twenty twenty three. Right. And the and the politics don't play into into uh, into the feds. You know, they they make their determination independent of, you know, the executive branch or the congressional branch. So right. uh, that's the good news. And I'm a you know, I'm a Brian Buffini person. And, and he thinks that this market is just going to be good. And he says he predicts it is going to be good through 2023 as long as we have these low interest rates. And right. yeah, so. Um, I guess uh, today we've got, uh, we're beating last year. We're still in COVID pandemic conditions, not as bad, right? But mm -hmm. we're still beating last year by 17% last October. Yeah. So we've sold 946 homes so far, uh, or excuse me, 1,109 homes so far this month. And last year we had done 946. So that's an increase of 17% <clears throat> or 163 homes more. And I just think that people need to embrace that. And, and there has to be tremendous consumer confidence out there, in my opinion, for this to be occurring. And I know, you know, a lot of people have left Las Vegas because they lost jobs, but we have people moving here. Correct. And yeah, and they can afford our affordable housing. So that has a lot to do with you know, why our numbers are increasing at this time. And September, we were up 10% as well. So, um, and now we'll see how we end up October. For the year, we're down, um, well, for the year, to say it in a positive way, we're 93% of last year. So there's only a 7% difference. Right, not bad. Not no. bad for what has happened. We have 1.7 months of inventory. Uh, we've got 6,500 homes, townhomes, and condos on the market. We closed 160 homes yesterday. We put 109 under contract. And here's the really big number. We listed 187 homes. Yoo-hoo. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, you know, uh, Max, when you look at the screen and you see that the resale last year, the median was 310. People's, people who even bought last year have um, at the median price. Equity. Right. Yeah, they, their home has increased twenty seven thousand dollars. So you know, it's um, it just seems like it's a perfect time to to buy, and that's why we're so. And we see a lot of first time home buyers this year. So I've been doing this series on the first time home buyers, right. and uh, I'm anxious to um, to keep that going. And uh, uh, just if you're out there in property management, you know, these are great videos to share with your tenants and. So they, they can become first time home buyers because they are really taking over the market right now. Yeah. And, and, and on top of that, you know, I was talking to a, a, con a general contractor yesterday at an event and he was telling us that, you know, he, when this whole pandemic thing started, he thought his business was just going to completely die, right? Like phones, like stop ringing. But a month into it, when everything settled down, uh, right around April, May, I mean, his phone started ringing off the hook and basically what people are doing are is, 
there, there, there's Californians coming in, selling their houses in California and having, you know, two, three, four hundred thousand dollars in equity coming here, buying a three, four, five hundred thousand dollar house and having extra two hundred, one hundred thousand uh, dollar funds to renovate and, 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 you know, do the things that they need to do to to feel comfortable here in Las Vegas. So our, our market's a little bit unique. And I think, you know, the the wild card is is the Californians, the New Yorkers, the you know the uh, the people from high uh, income states or high state income to states and and just poorly run states across the country are moving here because of the no state income tax, and and the amenities that come here living in Las Vegas and and the easy drive from here to L A. One of my actually favorite YouTubers right now, Graham Stephan, um, you know he does a really good financial for the millennials like a financial YouTube channel and he he's moving to Las Vegas. Uh, wow. you know, because he's paying like three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars in his taxes, uh, staying in California, and he's like, it's getting to a point where it doesn't make fiscal sense to to live in California here, especially be, because the of all the problems that we're having in right now here in, in in California. So, I mean, this is pretty crazy. I mean, I, I I'm pretty actually, you know, at the beginning of the probably three, four months ago, I was, I was a little skeptical about what 2020 was going to bring to the Las Vegas market here. But I, I think the, the immigration <laughs> from other states coming into our state may be the saving grace. And if we can do a better job, you know, and I, I you know, Oscar Goodman and the Goodman family here, um, if they continue to push to bring more industry into, you know, this city, I mean, that's just the, still the missing piece. That final piece, I think Vegas could be like just a booming town is that we need another kind of major industry to enter our market here. Uh, we need to be able to do some marketing. I mean, if our state and local governors, you know, do marketing to some of these businesses to bring them and the skill, the skilled labor to, to follow with it. I, I, I think there's no stopping Vegas. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, um, $23 billion worth of projects on the strip. I say this three or four times a week because I want people to keep that top of mind. And uh, when the uh, World Resorts opens with 4,000 rooms, I mean, and all the other things, the uh, the underground tunnel and, and all those things, uh, I'm really I'm really excited um, for next year. And no, absolutely. Yeah, and then, and then we'll see what happens in 20. I think that most people believe that um, we'll be back to normal next year sometime as far as our employment, unemployment will go down. And the projections are that even by the end of this year, we'll be at 7%. I think we talked about that last week a little bit. Yeah, the uh, Federal Reserve thinks that uh, by the end of this year, we should hit 7.3. I mean, the numbers came in this week at 7.9 for the month of September. Yeah. So, I mean, just to give people perspective, 7.9 was exactly where we were in right around early 2013, uh, yeah, early 2013 coming out of the financial crisis. And so, you know, that was kind of the mark. 2013 was kind of the year that one, the stock market took off and then the economy started, you know, booming again. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, we're, we're well ahead of the curve. If you really think about of, of the time frame it took for us to recover. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, we lost you there for a second. Um, yeah. Hi, Karen. Yeah. Bring on 2021. I agree. I agree. And uh, Joan, I think our audio is okay. You might want to check your phone. We're on. Good morning, Leslie. And good morning, Deborah. Good to see everybody. Um, I think everything's okay. <laughs> yeah, it is. I, I went in on Facebook to check the audio and it, it's playing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> <laughs> Run it. Great minds, Run. right? right. <laughs> so, um, I usually, uh, what I've been doing uh, during the week is giving people some uh, Facebook tips. And so I'd like to repeat one that I did yesterday because I also repeated it in the Bethany class after class because I don't think people understand. You can use hashtags now uh, in Facebook posts and in videos and, and anything that you post. But there's a little hack that I tell people, and these um, you see that there's some space, uh, Max, between the wor word Android and the hashtags. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And those, actually, you can't see them very well on the screen, but you hit a period, and then you hit enter for about 10 periods. 
And what you're doing is you're putting space between the post and the hashtags. Right. And you want to do that because when they look on their phone, if they see that hashtag, they're going to click on it and it's going to take them off your post. Sure. It's a link. So, <laughs> a, yeah. Um, right. It's a link that goes to all the posts that have that hashtag <laughs> or that word in it. Uh, and, and then, and because below here is um, a video um, that look, there, that's a bird in the sky. Um, it might not be discernible, but that's a bird in the sky. So on your phone, you're going to see the video budding right up against that word Android. Oh, thank you. There. Hot coffee. Uh, love hot coffee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it, it I just requirement for the morning. So I had, so yesterday I showed people on the phone. It made more sense than like showing it on the screen, but uh, that's what happens because on the phone, um, what happens, Max, if you don't do the periods and the and the return, the enters, mm -hmm. this ends up butting up against Android. And so your 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 links that they can get off your post are like right there. So that's why just hitting enter, 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 enter isn't going to do it. Facebook pushes it up because it knows there's no characters there. Right, but, right. Yeah, uh, that, that, that was the same in Instagram for the longest time. You always had to have characters if you... That's how people yeah. try to hide their uh, their you know their hashtags into the post instead of appearing at the very beginning. And don't put hashtags into your post. We saw when hashtags first came out on Facebook, we saw that uh, you could um, put them. I mean, people were putting them, embedding them in the post. And Joan had a question here: Can you put under the video? No, you can't. Once you post that that video, um, but you can't see it if you just follow this this methodology. It will work properly. And then I had one more thing I wanted to share with people since that's a repeat is that when you go to do Facebook ads, um, think of, I, I've broken it down into three categories. If you, if you're just building your page and you don't, uh, and you need engagement. And so we call, uh, we call these cold, this is a cold audience, brand awareness and reach. If you're trying to get brand awareness and reach, you're going to have to do it uh, first, before your cold audience moves into a warm audience. And once you start getting enough engagement, then you can war go into the warm audience categories of the ads, like getting more traffic, getting more engagement, um, video views, lead generation. And then once you get the lead generation and you're getting leads and things, then you can go into the hot audience where you can do conversions. And there is a conversion tool in the ads uh, or an object. Um, objective in conversions and then you have catalog sales and then you have store traffic i'm experimenting with the um the catalog sales because i think we can put our our listings in there hmm. i think because and i'm the new business manager is very different than the old one and now they have creative stu creator studio so a lot of new things and so it's going to keep me busy between now and the end of the year to come up with some classes to address these new things because um, there are some advanced people out there that want to keep moving you know with facebook ads so right. i just wanted to mention that today any questions on that is that clear uh, no, uh, just a comment in my own head, right? I'm surprised. I'm still surprised that I don't see a lot more realtor ads on Facebook right now, right? And and I know there's restrictions, and I know you need to do certain things and protocols to make sure you stay compliant with the the division and stuff like that. But I can tell you one of the things that you I don't see at all right now is any what I call complimentary real estate videos that are not about your listing but about real estate in general to help you build your brand a little bit more. So I'll give you an example right now, right? I'm, uh, my wife and I are considering buying a pool right now. And <laughs> okay. uh, so, yeah. I have one you can have. Right. Just come get it. <laughs> right. Uh, and and it, what, what I'm seeing right now is, is you, you know who's doing really well is the uh, landscaping and, the, and like the, the backyard guys. Because the minute I started going to you know, some landscaping companies, boom, all of a sudden I, I'm starting to see a whole bunch of ads on turf, on, you know, backyards and on pools. Right. And, and my whole point is saying that is that like, I don't see any realtor ads, right? One of the, if, if you want, I can tell you, if I'm thinking about buying a pool, the questions I have is, is my house big enough for even a pool right now? And I could be considering buying a house. And if you did something where, you know, you, you got some, 
a video talking about, you know, things to look for when you build a pool in real estate or homes in the valley that are, you know, what dimension, you know, just educating people on what they need to understand and, and look for and the nuances and the drawbacks and pros and the valuation of, of adding pools to your home. I mean, that would be something very timely for me. And, and another piece of content that you could build that you could put out as a brand building type of ad um, that I don't see anybody doing on the real estate yeah. side, which yeah. is kind of crazy. It is. It is. Uh, yeah, that is a, that's a, and that's a great example. I mean, it, I, I, I never thought of that, you know, all the things people have to, to consider if they're going to build a pool or buy a home that they may want to put a pool in if it doesn't have a pool. And that would be a great series of videos. Right. I mean, because I can tell you right now, more and more people, I was talking to another client of mine that owns a pool company here in town. And he's saying like his business is doubling over last year because wow. <laughs> people are, you know, I mean, this whole movement of working from home and and, and they, people want more space and, and they want to build an oasis because if they can't do anything outside, they, they, they want to make sure they have, you know, something that they can do at home. So, I mean, there's a boom uh, in in renovations and, and, and things related to the home right now. And if you can just step in front of it, right? Remember, we talk about like finding out where the wave, where the money flow is, right? And all we do is step in front of that money flow and tap into it and like, yeah. then your business gets better. Um, so, I mean, this is the time to do that and you should up your marketing. People are pulling back. I'm surprised. Like <laughs> if, if I'm a realtor, a top realtor right now, I would be doubling my down my efforts in my marketing because you do that now, two, three, four, five years from now, you'll just crush your competition. Right. I mean, you'll yeah. be so known, right? Because yeah. everybody's retreating right now and not yeah. spending any money. Uh, this is the time to spend money and and to build build that name for yourself. Yeah. And like John has a listing right now. And to your point, it's um, it's because the the family under the COVID guidelines couldn't uh, go to the community pool mm. and the house they moved from had a basketball court <laughs> and a pool. Right. And so now they've got this teeny tiny little patio in the back. And they had to, they couldn't go to the community pool during COVID. And they, they very quickly had a great appreciation for having their own backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So anyway, um, lots of, lots of ideas that people, because we've opened like a new chapter almost with this, the COVID has given people cabin fever. It's caused divorces, which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But you know, now that's somebody wants to sell a home, then maybe they want to buy one or two, the husband and wife, whatever. And and then also people uh, up, they want more space, or they right. have too much space, you know. Um, and it's brought all that to the top of mind. Yeah, absolutely. Because and this year's been a, a fantastic year. If you built a platform and some content that people have nothing else to do right now. Right. They have nothing else to watch. And right. if they're looking for a home or they're unhappy with their backyard and all of a sudden they scroll into your feed and you talk about like the benefits of having a bigger backyard, things to consider, the cost of, you know, having a bigger lot in your home, the water cost, the other, all the things that they consider, right. Or, or they should consider and you engage. I mean, I started watching all these turf videos of like, you know, putting down turf and I'm like, Wow, this is interesting. You know, there were some very good ones. Yeah. I was like, this is this is the timing of of you know social media and the ability for us to tap in twenty four hours a day to the the almost what I call the conscious stream of of of, of people and capture their attention. And every uh, most of the video apps, if uh, if people don't want to do their own videos, you can do voiceovers. So you can show and and you can do a, a voiceover over any video. But if you if you are showing a home and you're not in the picture and you're talking, <clears throat> Facebook, uh, if anybody hasn't realized, everything they're auto captioning, uh, auto -captioning now. Right. So, so whatever you say, people are going to see. And that makes it much more relevant to, um, to do these things now because people can see them and, 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 and the words sometimes resonate up here more than your voice. 
Correct. And the movement of the, you're showing this house and you're saying, you know, beautiful house in sunny Las Vegas in the ridges. It's, you know, $5 million. You've got to see this. And then you show pictures up there. But all that verbiage is going down on the screen for people to see. And that's really a major, major reason why people should get out and video because video is where Facebook is going. I mean, we just know that Zuckerberg said it and he keeps doing more and more things. <laughs> We're not going back. That's, that's for sure. Back, right? yeah. We're not going back. No, we way. Not, no. no one's going to prefer print ad over video and, and pictures. Right. So right. it's, it's, it's the perfect time. I mean, to go out there, brand build, the consumer expects more now from a professional especially in the real estate industry, a mortgage industry, right? They're not going to choose you because you can show a house or you can let them in anymore. I mean, that's that's 10 years ago right now. You have to be able to provide a value and a differentiator from you and the other realtor that elevates you as the expert or the trusted source of information and not just regarding you know, the, the home purchase transaction. Right. If you can bring to them and before anyone meets you, you know, it, it, let's walk through the process and thought process of person buying home, right? One of the things they start talking, you know, thinking about is affordability. And that's what we're going to talk about today and how yeah. to, you know, go into that. Uh, but if, if you team up with a you know mortgage person to come in and talk about the, the, the ways to qualify for a loan and, and what to look for and how to prepare your credit and things of that nature, I mean, that's just the start pro process. So I'm, if I'm a home buyer, the first thing I'm doing is how much can I afford is really the first, you know, whatever, right. the first question. And so if you team up and, and, and create content around that, that displays in front of those people who are visiting, you know, the the bank rates, the Zillow's, right? I mean, if you talk mm -hmm. about they have their own calculator right. for people to look at. And that's the reason why people go there a lot of times, right? On top of, you know, the, the listings or, or the available homes, they have other tools within the website to help them answer four, five, six, seven, eight different questions. And all you need to do is step into that stream. And at the end of the day, people are craving a, a more and more so a live interaction with somebody now, yeah. right? The last thing I, I mean, as I'm going through the process of finding this pool or considering buying a pool is like, I can research all I want online, but at one point I want to talk to somebody <laughs> that has answers, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> that can reassure me that, you know, the decision I'm making and the things I'm thinking about are relevant and important. And, but I'm not going to be at that point until I see that I can, you know, trust the source in which I'm about to call. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's easier and harder these days to get business you just have to work harder and build more content on the front end. And once they get in front of you, if you've done your job, the transaction is easy. Yeah. Meaning they, they already like, trust you, they believe you. And really it's about advising them and then walking them through the process and, and being done with it. Not, not necessarily selling them again on you, right? Because right. you should have already done that in your videos. So. Yes. Yeah. Exactly right. Well, let's watch this video. And so what I do, um, I put this on solo, so you can't see us, but you, you, if you have anything going on on your mic, um, I can mute us too. I'm, I might just mute us in case there's any. Yeah, I'm gonna mute. Okay. Application is for informational purposes only and should not be considered or taken as personalized financial advice. If you are looking for personalized financial advice, we highly recommend you seek out a licensed financial advisor who will be able to discuss your specific situation with you directly. Welcome back, my friend. You're crushing it. It's day four. Thank you for being here. When you know better, you can do better. I've been saying that throughout this challenge. And yesterday we covered how to get pre-qualified for a mortgage. So did you do it? I hope you did. If not today, please go back and re-watch day three and then take action because it's the action that's going to determine if you make progress in this challenge. Now today I wanna to talk about ways to improve your odds of getting a mortgage and most important, not being denied one. So let's go back and review my friends, Sean and Julie. Remember them? That's the couple we've been talking about throughout this challenge. Now, if you recall, they found their dream home and they made an offer on their dream house and the good news for them, their offer was accepted, but then they were denied a mortgage. The reason was they had a bad credit score. Actually, Sean did. 
Now, when they looked into it, one of the issues that Sean found was that he had a high usage on one credit card. Specifically, he was using over 30% of his limit. Once they realized how this was impacting their score, it was actually pretty easy to fix it, get that paid down and get their score up. And that's what I wanna talk about with you today. All right, so this is gonna sound a little weird, but I actually like talking about credit card debt when it comes to buying a home and here's why. Many people, maybe you, think you can't buy a home if you have credit card debt and that's actually a myth, which I love to bust. Here's the truth. You absolutely can still buy a home with debt, but it's much easier to buy a home and get a better rate if your debt is paid down. It's also much safer for you. Now, I know a lot of people have lots of different types of debts, student loans, car payments, personal loans. But again, today, we're gonna focus on credit card debt, and here's why. Credit card debt's a total ripoff. The rates can be astronomically high, 20, 25, 29%. And it's the credit card debt that's probably hurting your credit score the most. So we got to roll our sleeves up today and we got to look at if you have credit card debt, how do you get it paid down and what's the right order to pay it down in? Now, here's the good news. I've got systems for you today that are going to really work. And when you pay down your credit card debt, here's what's going to happen. You're going to free up your finances. You're going to improve your credit score. And most importantly, you're going to improve your chances of getting approved for a mortgage. So the problem with credit card debt is it's a complete ripoff. First of all, I told you earlier, the interest rate can be as high as 20, 25, 29%. It's very hard to get out of credit card debt when the rates are that high. And here's something that really, really makes me personally mad. The credit card companies last year made over $104 billion in credit card interest and fees. That's insane. Did you know that if, the, if you have $10,000 in credit card debt, which by the way, that's what the average American family has, and you make minimum payments, it'll cost you $22,000 to get out of that credit card debt and take you 22 years? My friends, that doesn't work. This is why the average American lives paycheck to paycheck. It's really the credit card scam. And I've spent two decades teaching Americans how to get out of credit card debt. I did an entire series of shows with Oprah called the Debt Diet Series, where we literally took Americans by the hand and showed them how to get out of credit card debt. I wrote a New York Times bestselling book called Debt Free for Life. So when I tell you I've got systems for you, I really do. Now we're gonna go over three very popular methods to get out of credit card debt. And I'm gonna dig in, you gotta roll your sleeves up on this one because it's a lot of work, but I'm gonna go through them with you. So get out that pen, we're gonna start to take notes. Now, Here's the first one. It's called the snowball method. I'm gonna to explain to you what that is. The second method is called the avalanche method. And the third method is called the search and shrink method. All right, so we're gonna right now roll up our sleeves and go into those three approaches on how to get a credit card debt faster, then figure out which one you wanna use. All right, so our first method is the snowball method. What is the snowball method? This is where you're gonna list your credit cards so I'm assuming you have more than one credit card. You're gonna list it from one, two, three, four, five, however many credit cards you've got. And you're gonna list it from small to large in terms of debt. And then what you wanna do is you're gonna make minimum payments on all the cards. And then you need to add extra money to the smallest card and pay that off first. The idea behind this method is that you will reduce the amount of credit cards that you have faster. And why is that approach important? Well, I want you to have less credit cards. Here's why. Psychologically, it feels really good. You'll feel good seeing yourself reduce how many credit cards you have. The second thing is you'll have less likelihood of being late on credit cards if you have fewer of them. So this is a great approach. It's simple and it works. Okay, the next method is called the avalanche method. With this approach, you list your debt by the highest interest rate. You list the highest interest rate first. You make minimum payments on all the cards and you add extra payment to the highest interest rate credit card first. Now this one makes the most mathematical sense, but it doesn't have the same emotional benefit, which is why the snowball method is still my favorite. But here's the thing, in a second, what I'm gonna show you is how to get temporarily the rates down to 0%. Now, if you don't use the next method again, my preferred method is the snowball method. I've personally seen people get really energized and motivated by quickly reducing the amount of cards they have. 
the search and shrink method. This method is all about shrinking your interest rate fast on your debt. Here's the truth about debt. It's not the debt that kills you, it's the interest rate. The fastest way to take bad debt and make it less bad is to get the interest rate down. It's just math. So imagine if you could take a credit card that's charging you, say, 20% interest, and you could reduce that to 0%. That would be a game changer, right? All of your payments then would be going to reduce your debt and not paying interest. That's the key, and the good news is it's possible. So building on the avalanche method, let's look at our credit cards with the highest interest rate. Let's say, for example, that you take your credit card with the highest interest rate that has a $2,000 balance. Now, if you did a quick search online, you'll find a card known as a balance transfer credit card. This type of card would offer you a 0% introductory interest rate. By transferring the $2,000 balance and paying $150 each month, you would pay off the entire balance in 14 months. And here's the best part, you would have paid $0 in interest. Now, why would a credit card company make you a zero interest rate offer? Well, there are two reasons. They may charge you a transfer fee for it. Not all do, but some do. So you gotta look at what that cost would be. The second thing, and this is what they're not gonna tell you. They are hoping that you will transfer the debt over and then be late on your payment with them, at which point they will also turn around and charge a high interest rate. Okay, so they're gonna list all the stuff in the small fine print. And the question you might be asking is, well, why would I even do this if they're these traps? And, and here's the answer, because when you know better, my friend, you can do better. This whole debt thing is a game, money's a game. And when you know the rules, you can play smart and you can win. You can be the smart one that shops for zero interest rate transfer. The calculator I just showed you, you will run through the fees and savings and then you can be smart and careful and not be late on your credit card ever and come out ahead. But my friend, only do this the smart way. Don't transfer this over and then be late on a new card or you're right back where you started or worse, okay? Finally, our next search and shrink method is to get a personal loan to pay down your credit card. While individual results may vary, I wanna tell you a personal story about Bill. He was budgeting every penny, but at the end of each month, he didn't have anything left to pay off his high credit card bills. He'd had three maxed out cards for a combined debt of over $20,000, and he was paying between 18 and 27% interest. He could barely make minimum payments, and here's the truth. He felt overwhelmed and trapped. One night he was talking to his dad and asked for help. After reading up on the personal loans, he decided to apply. Now here's the thing. He submitted his application to three of the 10 companies listed on the site, one of which is listed below. And he wasn't approved, by the way, by the first company. The second company offered him an interest rate that was almost as high as his credit card and was charging an origination fee. But in the end, he was approved by the third company and his results well, they were really pretty incredible. We did the math and he saved over $16,000 in projected interest payments. And his score went up by over 50 points shortly after transferring the debt. Not only that, but as previous rate, it would have taken him 27 years to pay off the credit card debt. With his personal loan, he's on track to pay it off in five. Remember, your results depend completely on what's on your credit report. A personal loan does not guarantee the exact same results, but I share the story to let you know there is hope if the previous three methods I've shared aren't working for you. So what does this look like in practice? You could go to an online lender that specializes in personal loans. I've included one right below that we like and recommend. With them, you apply for a personal loan. Your loan will then be shopped and you will receive multiple quotes. Then you can evaluate if the quotes and rates are favorable to what you're currently paying. And then the beauty is if the math makes sense, you can take action. The great thing about this approach, it's really fast. Of all the approaches, it may be the fastest approach to pay down your debt and get your score up quickly. But I also now wanna warn you on this approach. The problem with taking this potential quick fix to pay down your credit card debt is if you don't fix your spending habits, you could wind up right back in credit card debt. Then you will have new credit card debt and personal loans. So the only way I want you to use this approach is if you promise yourself you won't go back into credit card debt again. 
Okay, we covered a lot, but you have three real proven methods now to use to tackle that credit card debt if you have any. And if you're ready to buy a home, getting that credit card debt paid off is going to make owning your home much easier and safer. So well done. Of all the training videos, today was the toughest to cover because I know how hard being in credit card debt can feel. I've been there personally in my 20s and it took me a few years to pay them off. Hopefully with these tips, you'll be able to do it faster. But remember, you don't need to wait to get your debt fully paid off before you buy a home. Working on your debt takes time. And if you don't already have a plan, now's a great time to start. So tune in tomorrow when we get to the fun part where we start to look at how do you go and actually hunt for your dream home. So... There you are. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, that's good stuff. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I, my favorite is still the snowball effect, his first method of paying down debt. Because he's absolutely right. There's something psych psychologically uh, rewarding uh, on, on eliminating, you know, one item off of, uh, you know, your, your list of things to pay off. It's not the most uh, financially and mathematically correct, but the science has, you know, they've done statistics and it, it's proven to be the most effective. People stick with that method way more than the other two methods. The yeah. third method is very dangerous for people who haven't fixed the psychological uh, part of their their finances, right? Uh, I went through Dave Ramsey's course on financial mm -hmm. peace, and he talks about how uh, personal finance is actually 80% personal and 20% finance. And what he means by that is the personal philosophies and the habits is what drives you into debt, not the debt. <laughs> so, you know, getting out a personal loan and then paying off all your debts, you know, the only way that's going to work is, you know, in, in, in Ramsey's course, he talks about once you pay off a, a credit card, you, you call the credit card company to close it. Right. Um, so that's the only way to guarantee that you're not going to rack up that credit card debt again. So they, you know, so I mean, be careful on that, but good stuff. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, that's a problem that Americans have had for, <laughs> since the eighties, I guess, uh, seventies and eighties when debt became uh, part of our society from a consumer level. Well, I know that those high interest rates are uh, the worst and you never get ahead. And that's the whole point of choosing one of those three methods. But I, um, I know that Dave Ramsey, um, he, he preaches self-control and, and being confident that you're doing the right thing and, mm -hmm. and, and trying to change, like you're saying, your psychological right. approach to spending. Correct. And you, you need to forget about vacations just to keep up with the Joneses. And you don't need to buy a new car every two years. And uh, you need to you know, have the gusto of a gazelle to get your credit card balances down, whichever way works for you. Absolutely. And what, what's crazy about all this is I can tell you from personal experience, you know, going through the Dave Ramsey process and being, you know, close to $20,000 in, in, in credit card debt a few years ago, and then really changing, uh, actually creating a budget. You know, that's part of the, 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 the personal side, right, is you need to be aware where your money's going. Right. If you have, if you don't account for every dollar that you spend, that means you're going to have leaks. That's like not not knowing if your boat has holes in it. Right. You got to make sure right. that every dollar is accounted for. And uh, and going through that, you have to change so many things about the way you think about how to spend money. And it first comes his his Dave Ramsey's process is every dollar needs to be spent at the end of the month when you receive your paycheck for the next month, meaning you've already accounted for, excuse me one second here. Or um, it putting down a budget, but spending every dollar, including what you would put towards savings and, 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 and paying off debt and all your food before the month starts. And that's something that like, majority of people don't do, right? They, they get a paycheck and then they, they start spending. If there's nothing left, then so be it. So that's part of the personal stuff that they need to figure out. Yeah. And uh, I mean, just little things that made a difference uh, when uh, I think it was during the foreclosure time, uh, we found cheaper wine. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you know, so there's a lot of, I mean, and there's a lot of things that you can eliminate, you know, instead of buying a new car, you can buy a used car. I mean, there, there are things that it, again, it's up here. You have to, right. you have to for, stop worrying about what other people think. That's the other thing, you know, um, John and I like to go out to fine restaurants mm -hmm. when we go, we don't, haven't been I, maybe three or four times this year, but uh, normally we like to go one or once or twice a month. And what we've learned is, you know, don't order, don't order alcoholic beverages. <laughs> because they're, they're three times the price. Right. Of, yeah. it, it adds like 20, 30% to your bill. You don't realize that. Right. Yeah. Plus the tax and the Plus tip the and everything else that goes on top of it. Right. And uh, we just eat, we love the atmosphere. So we don't go to spend a lot of money. We spend very little money, but we have, you know, a very romantic time. Mm -hmm. And that's the point of it, not to uh, order the most expensive thing in the menu and have a couple cocktails or glasses of wine. And so, you know, we've modified our behavior and that's what people have to do. Right. Now, and I just thought about something, uh, you know, I'm going to coin this as a maximism here because uh, this is my kind of thought process and, and, and lessons that I've learned through going through Dave Ramsey's courses is, and, and through marketing is, is money is attracted to value, right? Money is attracted to value. We all know that now. Um, but there's two other skills that we need to learn, which is how do you keep that money and then how do you multiply it, right? So the second part is, is, is money is attracted to value, but money stays with responsibility, right? When you can manage your funds, right? When you can manage money properly, money will stay with you, right? Because we mm -hmm. can all make money. Everybody has those skills. All right. we do is go out and work hard. We right. either have talent or we have work ethic, right? right? Everybody has one of those two things. But the skills that, you know, as Americans, especially in a consumption society, is we, we no one's really taught us how to really keep it. Right. And, and, in, and we kind of know how to you know, multiply it by through investments, right? In real estate and in equity investments and stock market and things of that nature. But you can't multiply it if you, if you don't have any left after you've made it. Right. <laughs> and that's, and that's the middle part that no one really focuses on. And that's why, you know, uh, David Bach, David Ramsey, I mean, very low because it's not sexy. Right. It's, it's not exciting. No. <laughs> right. It's, it's the, it's the uh, hard work part of making money yeah. <laughs> and keeping money. Yeah. Right. But once you learn that skill, uh, things I can tell you just from the last four years after paying off our debt here, I mean, we, we have, my wife was very skeptical. She actually started, um, it, she pushed us to do the Dave Ramsey thing because I work in investments and, you know, my ego got in the way. Like, I know, I know how to manage money, blah, blah, blah. No, you don't. Right. <laughs> Take it from an investment manager. Like, you know how to invest money. You don't know how to manage money like yeah. a, on a day to day basis. And so when we went through it, she was very skeptical about having, you know, extra money because you have in the very beginning of part of the process, you really have to tighten everything, account for every dollar, the spending psychology and the habits you have to break. Um, and she thought she was never going to have more money. But now to this day, I mean, after we paid off all our debt, right? Uh, money stays with us because we're much more responsible and she has more money to spend personally, you know, because of the way we do our budgeting and things of that nature than she ever has before. And she's able to save her own, what we call discretionary, you know, funds. And she's never been able to do that ever <laughs> in her life. Wow. And so, um, and she has all the amenities and all the things that she wants to do. Uh, and I can tell you, you gotta learn, you know, Grant, I got this from Grant Cardone. He says, like, there's three skills that you have to master. You need how to make money, which we all kind of do, right? There's hundreds, if not thousands of resources out there on how to do that. Right. Second is you got to learn how to like, keep it. If you can't keep it and it just, if it comes in and then, you know, there's a hole in your, your boat and it just leaks out the other side, you, you won't be able to ever get to the third step, which is to multiply it. Right. And so this is the second part of, you know, being responsible and, and growing your wealth is, is keeping that money. And, so and then allow it to work for you. You make it, you keep it, and you multiply it. Exactly right. Grant Cardo. Yeah. I don't want to steal. I want to give him credit for that. Yes, give Grant credit for that. Yeah, yeah. And he and he started from scratch, and he did just that. And he did just that. I mean, he his, his story was interesting too. He said he was a car salesman, <laughs> and, and that's why he runs in the car business. But uh, you know, in his early his late twenties, 
he just basically banked every dollar. He didn't spend it. He didn't do anything. And he, until he started accumulating about a million dollars uh, in the bank, you know, he was still driving a you know nineteen whatever eighties Honda Accord uh, for the longest time. And he knew that he was going to get into the real estate game by multifamily, start investments, and he just banked everything. He didn't try to live with the Joneses, right? You know, if you follow Gary V, he did the same thing. He's not, yeah. you know, he he lived with his parents until like his mid 28, 30, yeah. when he, until he was 30, but he learned all the skills that he has and implemented now because of that. And he wasn't worried about going out on the weekends with his buddies or, you know, he was focused on building skills. And it's never too late. And it's, <laughs> I, I was just watching, uh, I follow a guy named Patrick Bet David. He's pretty interesting. He talks a lot of financial stuff too. And he's more focused on, you know, more of the high end because he does insurance sales and stuff like that. But there's never been a time right now that if you just learn those three skills, how to make money, how to keep money and multiply it, the the speed in which you build from going from zero to millionaire, zero to making $200,000 a year is the fastest you'll ever see. I mean, it, yeah. it just 20 years ago, you know, if you, if you wanted to make 200, $300,000 or become a millionaire, I mean, there was a ramp up period, right? Cause you, because you have to physically know, get to know enough people and, and, and improve your value to enough people to either have them pay you a high salary yeah. or for you to sell products and services, you know, at a price to get you to the, the number that you're reaching for today, like that, that ramp up period is so the runways shrink from where it used to be long. And now it's like within six months, you can be known by a hundred thousand people, right? Yeah. If you do marketing, right. And so, I mean, it's, We've never lived in a better time to, to be financially uh, free and, and, and fiscally responsible. Right. And I tell everybody, you know, we're in the fourth quarter and it, let make it, let's make this quarter the winning quarter by, you know, do some business planning. Mm -hmm. And in our Buffini class, um, I don't know if it's this week or next week, but we get into uh, to planning our, our business for the next five years. And it's really important, you know, and then you have to look at it periodically to to change it as as the market changes or as, you know, you, you change. So right. um, anyway, it's there's so many tools to help people be fis like you say, fiscally fit. Right. I can't say that. Yeah. Fiscally fit. <laughs> right. Fiscally fit. Yeah. Financially fit. I mean, it's financially easier word. Fit. Right. Yeah. And um, I created a spreadsheet years ago. Um, I used to teach Excel for Microsoft back when I was in Atlanta and I had my training center for uh, Microsoft um, and I taught Excel and I created a spreadsheet way back then of, of income and expense and budgeting. And, and so you as, as a I adapted it to uh, the real estate industry. So I have a section where you put, you know, your closings like January fit all the way down. And then when you have a closing or you go to the next month, everything uh, percolates into the next month through the end of the year. So if you add a, a deal to your real estate, it, you sh it shows you what your cash flow is at the end of every month. Mm. And it's, yeah, and I've been thinking about maybe publishing it or. Uh, I'm going to tell you, once you build a course around it, yeah. specifically yeah. for real estate agents. Yes, exactly. Your lineup here. Exactly. Jimmy Dagan and I are getting together on Monday and we're going to be uh, creating some three new courses. Mm -hmm. So uh, business planning is one of them and I'm uh, going to bring that into the class. Yeah. And then, right. uh, yeah. Because if it's, you want to buy it, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know exactly how I'm going to, what I'm, I should do with it. Because it's years of um, of developing it to, to where it, you can you can do five years, mm -hmm. but anyway, yeah. Anyway, it's, anyway, because it's an it's an important element. Uh, you know, once people figure out the 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 marketing and the the money making game, I mean, the second part is like, how do you keep that money? Like, right. what do you do with that money? Yeah. Right. Uh, do you go out and buy cars and homes and, and and take vacations, or do you you know actually set aside and put a future goal in mind and an end goal in mind to achieve something greater and to multiply the money that you keep to get there? So right. yeah. it's and I and I I think I think that a lot of people don't realize when you mentioned something that um, 
you buy a bigger home and you say, oh yeah, I need all this extra space. But what comes along with that is <laughs> higher electric bills, more water bills, um, you know, higher taxes. It's not just the home itself and high and more maintenance. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of things uh, to think about when it comes to financial management of your, of your personal life. Right. No, absolutely. And until you line item every expense that you have, yeah. right where your money is flowing you will never understand where that why that is and so you know the great thing about knowing where every dollar goes is when you make decisions you know moving forward like buying another house or you know buying a car or getting into more debt of some sort you know that this is how much money's coming in and this is how much money is going to come out additionally because of that and is it worth it right yeah. what you'll find is uh, so uh, surprisingly to the end result of uh, the Dave Ramsey you know and, and working with the mentor was the, the biggest part is you, you got to spend cash. So you got to have cash in your hand if you wanted to go anywhere, right? To dinner, to whatever. You don't pay, you don't swipe anymore. It's <laughs> cash. And what you find is when you have cash in your hands, you actually don't want to let it go. <laughs> and you, you're able to think three to four or five times, uh, do I really need that item, right? Yeah. Right. right now? All right. And, and surprisingly enough, um, like I've been wanting a car for three years now. I know. Like, <laughs> I was thinking of that. I, I, just pay, I paid off the car two and a half years ago and I'm like, do I really need another car? You know, is, is it worth, you know, 40, 50, $60,000 for a new car? And the answer is still no. <laughs> right. As before, I'm like, oh, I can afford it. The monthly payment only adds, you know, we, we think about monthly payment. We don't think yes. about the overall how much money we spend. And and that's the problem that yeah. the credit card companies and the consumer and the advertisers are banking on is like, we don't think about the long-term effects. We, we only care about, can we satisfy that emotional need right away, right, through the payment? So Exactly, exactly. Well, Max, it's a beautiful Saturday. Do you have plans? Uh, actually, my kids are starting soccer today. Oh. So my son's already at soccer. I'm right after the show here at 10 a.m. I'm going to take my daughter to soccer. Cool. So other than that, just no. And the, the weather's beautiful right now. I so know. get out there in the sun. Yeah. You know, social yeah. distance. What you need to do, put on a mask, but get out and enjoy. This is the most beautiful time of year for for Las Vegas. Yes, you don't want to miss this. Right. Right. I put the calendar up on the screen to tell everybody um, what's coming. We have on Wednesday, we have a agent formula class on the website from three to five at 8400 West Sahara in the training center. And then next day, um, Thursday morning, we have a class uh, on law. And this class is extremely important for real estate agents to take as a core class. <clears throat> and if you have all your core classes, it's a great class to take for your general credits. And I keep telling people, come to these classes. The more you learn, the more you earn, the more you know, the more you grow. And we continue to update the classes. So everything is up to date and you learn new things. And, and the questions from, we, we, we open the classroom up as well as Zoom. And it's very interesting. We get questions from the Zoomers and we get questions from the people in the class. And um, Jimmy has a saying that he teaches so he can learn because he learns from the students and they always have interesting Ooh. questions. Yeah. And then uh, we have our social media review class from one to three, uh, which has, uh, it's really becoming a great class, that uh, review class. And anybody who's ever taken the social media is welcome to come back to it. And um, we go over all the questions that people have and, and, try to really drill, drill down and show them how to overcome a lot of their fears of using these platforms. So yeah, it's a little lighter week for me this past week. I had a class every day <laughs> and it was pretty heavy duty. Um, but and we, every Friday we have our noon, noon to two uh, Buffini class. So life is good. Life is good. All right. Go out there, everybody. It is the fourth quarter. Uh, up the marketing game. Yes, absolutely. Because I can tell you, I mean, this is one of the best times. We, we, we may never see this like this time period where people are so focused on social media now that we have because there might be a revolt after you know the election goes over and people are like, I'm putting down my phone <laughs> going outside because <laughs> right? they haven't been outside. So uh, get that out there, uh, work hard, 
make money, keep your money. Multiply it. <laughs> Max, have a great week, you. everybody. We love everybody. Have a great week, and I'll see you all tomorrow morning for a short uh, uh, stint with me. It's about 15 minutes, and uh, we do positive thinking. We do uh, uh, spiritual things and emotional. So everybody have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.